You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That's Bet Online where the game starts. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we've got some interesting news coming out of Austin, Texas in regards to Chris Beard. He has been fired by Texas, the head basketball coach there in Austin after a domestic violence charge against his fiance. And following that, all of that awful news, there are some interesting conversations happening about potential candidates emerging to replace him. We're going to discuss that, and then also we're going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's massive game against the Alabama Crimson Tide. I've got a weird feeling about this one. I'm actually leaning towards the Wildcats, and it may shock you as to why we're going to get to that later on in the show. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms and if you're watching on youtube please subscribe we have finally eclipsed 2900 subs we're getting closer and closer to 3000 so make sure you hit that subscribe button so like i mentioned chris beard has been let go by texas after uh he was put on uh, some type of you know probation uh for a domestic violence charge against his fiance and following that as you may expect for such a prestigious program like texas there are some interesting candidates that have emerged to replace him so you go and you look around and you'll see, well, Rodney Terry, the Texas interim, is probably going to be the favorite to get the job. And you'll see Eric Musselman's name out there as well. You'll see different people like Chris Holtman from Ohio State, Kansas State's head coach. And I was reading an article and just happened to stumble upon John Calipari's name in one article from Gary Parrish of CBS Sports. And it's not just one article. I'm going to get to it in a second. But Gary Parrish of CBS Sports put John Calipari on a list of potential candidates to replace Chris Beard at Texas. And this is what he said, quote, All things being equal, there are a few reasons for a men's basketball coach to leave Kentucky for Texas. However, the circumstances for Calipari at UK are no longer ideal because he is stuck on one national championship despite having immensely talented rosters every year, has not been to the Final Four since 2015, and turned in the worst season in modern school history two years ago, lost to St. Peter's in the first round of the NCAA tournament last March, and took a number one ranked team at Kimpom this preseason and started two and four in their first two quadrant uh, games with zero wins over top 40 Kimpom teams. He went on to say, Kentucky fans are frustrated and restless. Calipari bouncing to Texas after this season, especially if he doesn't meet expectations for a fresh start with a new fan base and a set of expectations would make some sense for a quality of life perspective especially considering Texas has the type of resources that would allow it to match Kentucky dollar for dollar if it came to that. So it's great that this has been timed exactly following our episode yesterday of me saying, yeah, I don't think Cal's going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, I think that he's going to be pretty comfortable for the next few seasons unless things just drastically go wrong or he resigns himself. Kentucky's not going to be firing him because of how much money they owe him. And here we are, just less than 24 hours later, and we're now starting to hear discussions about, oh, well, Calipari could be a long shot uh, potential candidate for Texas. And I want to emphasize that word there, long shot. By no means of my saying today that Texas is going to hire John Calipari. I don't even know if they're going to look at him. But Gary Parrish of CBS was not the only person to say anything. Kevin Sweeney of Sports Illustrated, quote, if he's hunting for a potential soft landing spot and a fresh start, Texas has the deep pockets to hire him. Calipari has done this before, flirting with UCLA in 2019 before signing a lifetime contract with Kentucky. And Sweeney was not the only person to say anything outside of Gary Parrish. Jeff Borzello of ESPN, their lead basketball analyst, or one of them rather, quote, it's worth testing the waters for Kentucky's John Calipari and Baylor Scott Drew. Calipari isn't under threat of being fired. He's owed nearly $50 million. But the pressure on him has undoubtedly increased after going 9-16 in 2021, losing to 15-seed St. Peter's last season and starting 10-4 and this season. So it's several sources, all three of them 
legitimate sites out there, legitimate news outlets that have come out and said, listen, we don't know if Texas is going to be looking at John Calipari. They should for one, and for two, if they want him, they could probably get him. And again, it's just so bizarre to me that that is now the state of Kentucky basketball is after having such a solid start, I think, for the Wildcats is now over the past, what, three seasons, we've now seen things kind of slowly start to deteriorate, I think, with this, specifically with the on-the-court on the product. And now Cal is being looked at. I can't give you any information outside of what the national types have put out there. I don't even know if Texas is interested in reaching out. To be honest with you, I don't know if they necessarily can have any sort of legitimate conversations right now considering where Kentucky is at in the season, where Texas is at in the season. They're still a top 10 team right now. If I'm not mistaken, they're number six in the country. I know they just took a loss to Kansas State, but still, these two programs are fighting for a lot right now this season. And to be completely honest with you, I think Rodney Terry, the Texas interim, is probably going to do everything he can to prove that he can, in fact, run this program and take over this coaching position. So I want to kind of leave everything today with this straight-up statement. Do I believe John Calipari is leaving for Texas? No, I do not. Do I believe Texas will reach out to him? I'm not sure. Do I And I don't know what those conversations would look like following because you have to think about the situation that he's in right now. Signed a lifetime contract like all three of these writers obviously noted, like we noted on yesterday's show. We actually noted on the show before that with Isaac Shade of the Locked On College Basketball Podcast. Does not make sense to fire Calipari right now. But would it make sense in the future, if you're looking at this from like a 10,000-foot uh, perspective, right? If you're looking at this from the outside, Would it make sense for a mutual parting of ways between a coach that does not, apparently, is not liked by, I would say, either a vocal minority of the fan base or a decent portion of the fan base? Would it make sense for him to have a mutual parting with a program that he's at to then go to another prestigious program that has the ability to recruit, that has the money to kind of invest things into NIL, arguably better than what Kentucky has done? I would actually say significantly better than what Kentucky has done so far in this NIL era. Would that make sense for a mutual parting of ways to happen? I mean, from looking from the outside, if I wasn't a fan or if I wasn't anybody that was too plugged in, if I was given all this information, I would say, yeah. I would say, why not? It makes sense for Cal. I mean, obviously, he can get out and he can kind of start things over like all three of these writers have suggested. You hear that word over and over again, fresh start. It it makes sense on paper. But again, I think all of this is relative to what happens over the next couple of months. I think Kentucky has the ability to turn things around, and I think they have the ability to pull themselves out of the rut that they are currently in. It's going to take one heck of a coaching job in order to do that, but I definitely think it's possible. And what better time to prove it than now? Because Kentucky's got a massive game coming up against Alabama, and I want to break it all down here for you on today's episode. We're going to do that in just a second. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. Guys, if you are looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you've got to try Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and as I said on yesterday's show, my goal is to eat just a little healthier this year. And if you're like me where you want to eat healthier but you don't want to sacrifice the taste in food, then I've got the best thing for you. You've got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious you won't even think that they're good for you and they are perfect for your New Year's resolution, uh, just like me. And you may be asking, what makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate, and they come in unbelievably good flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. As we all know here on the show, salted caramel cookies and cream, those are my two biggest advocates right now. I'd highly encourage you guys, if you're going to check out Built Bar, Try one of those flavors. They're only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've actually been talking about ordering your bars from Built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. You can head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream double chocolate or coconut puffs. I would encourage you to get the cookies and cream, although all the flavors are fantastic. And if you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro. Would highly encourage you guys to go check that out. And 
Again, if you can't get to a Sam's Club or a Walmart, Built.com is the place to be. You guys can thank me later. All right, moving along here on the Friday edition of Locked On, Kentucky Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Hey, look, thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day, but make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Isaac Shade, Andy Patton, hosts of the Locked On Zags and Locked On Tar Heels podcast are now joining together to talk about basketball every single day. Would highly encourage you guys to go check them out. We've had them on the show several times. I've been on their show several times. Look, as a Kentucky fan, you need to be plugged in as to what's going on in the college basketball world. They are a great place to go if you want to hear more about what's going on outside of the Wildcats. You can hear from big-name experts, insiders, coaches, and players, and myself just about every week. So, again, Locked On College Basketball available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. All right, Kentucky taking on Alabama tomorrow. It's going to be a massive game. We've got the analysis here for you, essentially, though, to break it down for you at the top. The qu- a question I want to ask after doing a little bit of research. Is Alabama essentially just a more hyper version of Missouri? And if so, that may spell bad things for the Wildcats, but you need to hold your horses because I've got several reasons why I think Kentucky may be able to actually pull this game out. (laughs) Although the numbers may not suggest it, I've got different reasons outside of that. So to kind of dive into what Alabama is actually outside of, are they more just a, a more hyper Missouri? They're the second fastest team in the nation right now. They move up and down the court fast. And as we noted last year, we did a lot of X's and O's deep dives. Last year, we noted that Nate Oates, the Alabama head coach, likes to run a five-out offense or a four-out, one-in type offense. It's a motion offense focused on dribble drives and kickouts. The spacing is what makes this offense special, what makes this team special. That's something that, obviously, Kentucky fans know a lot about as they've gotten to learn about Cal's offense over the last few years. There's occasional issues with spacing, especially late in-game. We can get into that at a later time, but for it, the spacing is what in, it's important for this Crimson Tide team. And there is kind of a philosophy that goes along with that. Love threes, like twos, that's the type of mentality that they have. They space out, they drive, and they kick. They're really fast in transition. Whenever they get a rebound, they go down, they try and look for the rim first, and if they can't get a shot, they're kicking it out for a three. And they're more than likely kicking it out for a, for a three, regardless of whether or not there's a look at the rim. They're trained to look for the three-point shot. The offense handles the ball well, in high ball uh, situations, they handle pressure well. It's a great offense if you're knocking down your threes. And so far, Alabama has knocked down their threes at a pretty high clip. They're not taking a lot of twos. They are 350th nationally in percentage of points from outside the arc. Their offense is the outside shot. Now, you may say, well, Kentucky's been pretty good at guarding the outside shot this year. Well, actually, they're in the 200s in Kimpom in opponent three-point percentage. But... They're in the top 20, according to shot quality, in terms of three-pointers contested, three-pointers guarded. So they get out there to guard those threes. It's just teams have been hitting them at a relatively high clip as opposed to what their defensive metrics may indicate. So it's an an interesting matchup for Kentucky from that perspective, right? Alabama likes to shoot a lot of threes. Kentucky really does defend them well, but teams have been hitting them at a higher clip than expected. And it's a, it's on the road on top of that, and you're also going up against one of the stars in the SEC, arguably the best player uh, in the SEC right now in Brandon Miller, averaging over 19 points a game. He's their best three-point shooter. Alabama actually doesn't shoot it particularly well overall, but they're really balanced, I think, according to their metrics, outside of their star power in Brandon Miller. This is a bad matchup because of the position Miller is at. He plays power forward, the four spot. As we all know, Kentucky has had struggles with that. I want to get to why that actually may not be as big of an issue in a second. But yeah, this Alabama team, they're quick, they shoot fast, they play a modern offense, and they've beaten some really good teams. Now, they lost to Gonzaga, they lost to UConn earlier this year, but they beat Michigan State, a team that the Wildcats couldn't. They beat North Carolina. They beat number one Houston on the road. wasn't at a neutral site. It was at Houston. And they've also beaten Memphis this year. Again, balanced. They've got a star. They like to shoot threes. This is a fun team. It's a shame that, you know, so far this season, they've struggled with fan attendance. I don't have any doubt in my mind that they're going to have a lot of people there to watch this one because it's Kentucky, obviously. But this is going to be a fun game. I think this is going to be an interesting one. Alabama in the top 20 on Kempom in both offensive and defensive adjusted efficiency. 
All of these numbers, all of these things, Brandon Miller, all these different things that I pointed out to you, they, they all kind of indicate like, well, this should be a tough game for Kentucky and they should not be favored. And you're right. Ken Palm only gives the Wildcats a 30% chance to win this game. But I think that they've got more than just a chance to win this game. I think they're going to win it outright. I want to get to why in a second after breaking all this down. But I want to remind you guys real quick to just subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on podcast, please leave a five-star review. It would mean a ton to us here moving forward, trying to get the 3K subs, trying to get to, to honestly, five before the end of the uh, end of the basketball season. And I definitely think it's possible, so please make sure you are subscribed. And if you would like to, please like the video. I've not really asked that for, for uh, uh, gosh, I can't even think for how long. How I, I can't remember the last time I asked somebody to like a video, but if you'd also like the video, it would be much appreciated as well. And again, thank you so much uh, to you guys for uh, listening to the show. All right, wrapping up the Friday edition of Locked on Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. So we've got a interesting game coming up against Alabama and Kentucky. It's going to be tough. The Wildcats are not favored. Um, but I think that Kentucky's going to win this for a couple of reasons. Alabama defensively, I think they're really stout. Obviously, they're top 15 in both three-point and two-point percentage. They've got some height to them. Their front court is good defensively. I think Oscar Shibwe is going to be able to go off in this game again. I just don't see Alabama, first and foremost, holding Oscar Shibwe down in this matchup. I know that they've been good defensively. Offensively, though, shibwe has been dominant against anybody. And so I believe in Oscar Shibwe, first and foremost, in this matchup. Charles Bediaco played well at home against Shibwe last season, but it was offensively. Didn't hold him. This, this year, his minutes, Bediaco's minutes, have been kind of, take, they've kind of taken a bit of a dip. So I wonder how much Alabama will actually want to use him here. And again, there's not a whole lot of reason outside of Shibwe and Toppin, I think is also going to be really important. The front court for, uh, for Kentucky against the front court for Alabama is going to be interesting to me because of the way that Jacob Toppin's playing right now. Two, point, or two back-to-back games where he had 20-plus points. He's going to be heading into this game hot. I would love to see him continue that, and I believe he's going to. And then the final thing I'll say here is you talk about the issues with Severe Wheeler and the fact that he's been so inconsistent, I think, with his shot. Look, he's continuing to distribute. He's continuing to do what Kentucky does best offensively, which is get the team up and down in transition. This Alabama team likes to go fast. I think Severe Wheeler is going to be able to help control the pace of this game if they need to slow it down, if they need to push the tempo. He's a good ball handler. I think Kentucky right now is putting themselves in a position to where after winning their last two games, they're going to come into this one with a better mentality, I think, than may be expected. And then on top of this, Alabama's worst game from an efficiency standpoint was against Kentucky at home last year. I think the Wildcats take this one right now. Kentucky, uh, according to Kim Palm, is going to win the, or lose this game 78-72. I've got Kentucky winning this one 79-75. I think they're going to win this game by four. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be fun. Oscar Shibway, Jacob Toppin, Severe Wheeler. What do those guys look like? I think it's going to be very important. Cason Wallace has to continue to do his thing, obviously. It's a team effort, right? But it's the front court and it's your point guard. That's what's been the major concern for the Wildcats so far this season. I think that's going to be what gets it done for the Wildcats in this game. If you've got any thoughts on a final score prediction for this one, you can leave it in the YouTube comments below or you can hit me on the socials. And that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hey, you can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. And you can follow the show over on Instagram at Kentucky podcast questions comments concerns leave them in the comments hit me on the socials I will see you all on Monday for another episode of Locked On Kentucky hope you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless